Hey everyone, Daniel here, and I am at NC Comic Con Oak City with Chris Ryle, Chief Creative Officer of IDW Publishing. We're back at the IDW booth, uh, and of course, also writer on ROM. Well, co writer, well, I co -write, should have co-writer. Since yes. Christos Gage is a North Carolina guy, I don't want to yes. take any yes. attention away Christos, from him. Yes, which, you know, uh, I, was, I was actually I was, I was wondering if he was going to be here because uh, I've, I've met Chris Dose before and he's, he's a great guy. We, we just like chatted about like ROM and all that. And yeah, just, we, we talked great. about ROM long before we ever started working on the book. Um, mm -hmm. Just at conventions, we would start talking about it because I don't even know how it came up, but it always comes up. Right. So it was just sort of through our shared love of the character that uh, when we got the rights to the book, I'm like, well, I can't do this by myself. Like, yeah. me and Chris have been talking for years about what we would do if we ever got the rights, thinking we never would. Yeah. So then he was my first call when we did finally get the rights. Yeah. So yeah, let, let's uh, let's jump right in with that. You are known for being a huge ROM fanboy. I love people as my audience well knows I love ROM as well. So let's talk about, obviously when you got the license for IDW uh, after the, you know, you know, like years of... 50 years yeah. I think it was of chasing the license. Yeah, yeah, yeah 50 <laughs> years. Um, it was about 10. Yeah. You know, it was like the first week we got the Transformers license from Hasbro, my next sentence you know, out of my mouth was, what about ROM? And <laughs> yeah. then it became this like, literal 10 year yeah. like chase to try to actually work out the ride to make it happen so yeah but it has um, so as you're writing this in a completely different continuity it's you guys are clearly trying to do this on your like like make it very different from the Marvel series is that sort of a challenge do you find yourself sometimes like drifting oh we could create a character like uh, like Starshine, but you know. It's yeah, like... I mean, I was really wary of it because I think the worst thing you can do when you're a big fan of something is sometimes to work on it. Like, mm -hmm. no slight to the movie, but um, Mark Johnson, being a big Daredevil fan, mm -hmm. didn't make for the best Daredevil movie because it was so fanish trying to put all that stuff in there. So, for us, it was like, look, we know we like Rom. Nobody else knows who the hell the character is. I mean, you know, certain people aside, yeah. but. I mean, and I'm definitely not the typical ROM Yeah, demographic. ROM's it never was, been collected. It was much, it was much past my... Uh, yeah, so I mean, a lot of people have heard of the character, maybe seen people draw, but don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. There's no collection, there's no easy way to read the old stories, so we thought our comic has to be something accessible to new people. And, you know, if the old fans like it and see a similar, I don't know, feel, or the character feels not too different from the one they like, then great. But it's got to be a thing that works now, yeah. you know, without any reliance on or, or expectation that people would remember old stuff. So, yeah, it's a brand new continuity. The only shared DNA is the character, I think, comes from the same sort of heroic guy attempting to do the right thing yeah. place as the original character. But otherwise, yeah, everything's know. all new. Um, and yeah, I, I even, even the even the diorates, like down to their design, and even a little bit of how they function, I noticed was slightly different from the Marvel series. Yeah, I mean, they're they're shape changers to whatever degree, but ours we wanted to make sure it was more black magic focused because we have sort of long term plans for the way that's going to work out. Um, yeah, and I then I didn't want it to be like the one thing in the old rom comics was, you know, it was the early '80s, so everything was kind of simplistic. So it was like, they're the evil diorates of the evil planet of the evil dark nebula, and they're just doing yeah. evil things because they're evil. Yeah. That's kind of simplistic. So, you know, we've got, there's a diorate who um, people will see, you know, is conflicted about the whole thing. He's, there's people that have different philosophies, you know, than us, well, aliens anyway. Um, but it doesn't make them all bad. Like, they believe in a cause and, and a goal that isn't ours, but we didn't want it to just be, you know, good guys and bad guys with no gray areas. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like uh, readers of G.I. Joe, uh, if you picked up the latest G.I. Joe issue, will, are, are going to get a hint of that uh, with a certain event that I, I don't, obviously I don't want to spoil it, um, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, after the race became, or Rom himself too, became part of this Hasbro universe, we were going to slowly build to that in ROM. You know, the first issue ends with the reveal of a raid saying, Yo, Joe, yeah. which we were going to have be this slow build to like, Oh my God, yeah, G.I. Joe's uh, exist in, yeah. in ROM's world, and maybe the Transformers will down the line. But then that quickly became, let's do revolution and yeah, do this big event. Yeah. But so now, yeah, the dire rates are have infiltrated the world in ways that ROM never expected. They seemingly have been here longer than he expected and, and are more ingrained than... Uh, 
than he would have thought. So yeah, I mean they'll they will spill out into the other books at yeah. times. I mean I mean I think like one of the biggest moments was uh, like that first issue of Revolution where um, you know it's that it's that big you know it's that final page where uh, you know Rom just blasts Joe Colton and it's he had like, it coming it's anyway like, right and like, it's it's one of the, but it's just that you know that revelation of and that's I think one of the really cool things that Rom can bring to this shared universe is. The race have been here for so long. Who is a diorate and who isn't? Yeah. And if Joe Colton, like leader of GI Joe, can be a diorate. You know what does that mean for for the entire universe? And that, so I'm, yeah. I mean that's why the old comic worked for me so yeah. well because it was just this like level of paranoia. You know it was in the days of like invasion of the body snatchers movies yeah. stuff like that where that whole thing of like who is my neighbor really? Do I really know who they are? And even in shows like The Americans now where people look normal but are hiding a big secret like that's the diorates are kind of the epitome of that you know is the guy next to you who seemingly is your friend and even who you've grown up with are they actually an evil alien with other you know more nefarious purposes and stuff so that's a fun thing to play with are you a diorate <laughs> i'm not a diorate but of course the diorate would say that he's not so you know i would <laughs> <laughs> I like to think if I was, I would at least be one of the conflicted ones that, you know, <laughs> sees the good on both yeah. sides. Earth has all these cool comic books. We don't have any of that on the homework. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, okay, all right. So, uh, transitioning. Um, what was it? How's it, how's it been like? Uh, you know, obviously, you're the chief grade officer. So, what's it been like to kind of... Uh, over like looking over uh, as the revolutions like as the revolution verse has been uh, building like like what was that experience like I mean I loved it because I'm an old like Marvel and DC guy so I grew up with characters being part of a universe where even if the characters weren't interacting mm -hmm. you might read an old spider-man comic and then Thor flies across in the background and you just get the sense of like this larger world filled with these characters and so for us, it's the same thing. Like, we're telling the story that's kind of the dark, paranoid little corner of the universe with Rom, but yeah. I'm sure things that he does, you know, are going to bring him more in contact with the Transformers or the Micronauts or GI Joe at times. Yeah. And so, I mean, and Revolution was like the kickoff of that. Just like, here's everybody all fighting, uh, yeah. sort of a shared enemy, but they still have different means to do so. So, I mean, they didn't all part as friends necessarily. Yeah, I, I noticed that the, the Joes have kind of. There's kind of at least like almost every book has a has like at least one Joe in it. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, and, and Ron, it's the beachheading grunt. Um, yeah, I mean, Joes to me feel like they feel like the shield. You know, they're there yeah. to be this ultimate peacekeeping force against threats greater than the ordinary. So it would make sense they would be aware of and be drawn into conflicts with the Wraiths or the Transformers and all of that. And really not want any of these aliens that are wreaking havoc on their world here. So. Uh, you will, we'll definitely see more of that in the book to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's that's definitely something that, like, uh, when I'm when when the ROM uh, free comic book day first came out before Revolution was announced, that was one of the things I, I you know when I did my video on it, I mentioned I was worried about you know, ROM was built with this whole universe around it, and that really is what I think elevated it to being really something special, and so you know not knowing that revolution was going to happen but you know it was it was sort of that was my worry was can you really do that same level of achievement with and you are know, you still worried have we have we no oh some my, of your gosh. Fears my, or my, my fears were gone by issue four. Oh yeah like, okay yeah i mean well i mean actually they were probably gone by like issue two because it was so good but uh but like I issue four like earth ball just like that first story arc just you just knocked it out of the park, honestly. It was, it was great. Um, well, and the thing we wanted with it was... Um, well, it's funny, because the fan responses are very different. Um, I mean, I, I have seen like some very hardcore people who are like, you changed Rom's neutralizer Well, design. and the hands, yeah. They, the flipper hands. But, uh, okay, I'm sorry, but I'm just going to stay for the record. Fing giving Rom fingers was one of the best decisions that you could have made, okay? 
I, I love the mitten hands as much as the next guy, but giving him fingers just makes sense. The mitten hands were just mean, man. It's like, okay, he's trapped in this armor forever. He gave up his humanity. He can't, he can't live he can't. like a human anymore. And now he, he's, he's got, got, he's got like Lego, like, Lego, 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 Lego man. And really, he had those because the crappy toy, yeah. they didn't know how to do articulated fingers at that time. So now that we can do that, like, give the guy fingers, man. Yeah. Um, and then, but a lot of, of fans the, gave me the finger for that. Yeah. But, but of course, the, and then yeah. like I loved how you homage that in the end. I, I, I had to like have like, a little bit of fun yeah. with it. Yeah. And, it's, and it's like a symbolic thing of you know he's learning to control the armor. He was uh, the first scene. He was originally going to be like this, you know, but <laughs> that seemed harsh. Um, yeah. No, but like the original, the initial response was Rom can't work without a universe around him. Rom needs, you know, the whole Marvel universe, or it's not gonna, it's not gonna make any sense. Or I don't any think fun. he needs the Marvel universe. No, but, but then after we did the Hasbro universe, you know, the Revolution thing, people said Rom shouldn't be a part of the universe. He needs to be on his own. I'm like, what do you guys want? We gave you that. We gave it. so, but I mean, that's kind of the nice thing about these events is you do a thing, everybody interacts, and then they go back to their own personal little corner. Yeah. So, well, I, f I feel like most of the people who are against the Hasbro universe were the Transformers fans who who just like are feeling like it's chocolate and notably the James runner. Roberts fans because I know yeah. James is such a very specific book and story he's telling and yeah. I get it like we don't want to mess oh, with that I don't want to change what he's doing so now it's just like here's all of these pieces and players in the same universe if you want them yeah, for exactly. your story like, they're yours if yeah, not yeah. don't I don't want to mess with the books, you know. But uh, but yeah, and James is he's still doing it. He's still doing great stuff. Oh, and, totally. And, the, and, and of course, Lost Light is a book that's built to be kind of out there on its own. Completely, yeah. Yeah. So uh, it, it's it's still awesome. It's great. Um, so yeah. Uh, and of course, as Chief Grey, uh, as Chief Grey officer, you've also you're overseeing just kind of the general, like all the IDW books. Uh, tell us a little bit about like what's that like kind of you know, you know obviously you. you were the chief, you were the editor in chief, but you recently left that position. So, as uh, as moving into just being the CCO, like kind of, has it given you more kind of freedom, or is like? It's definitely given me what, freedom like? from the schedule. Yeah. You know, there it's it was a strange thing having the post position because on one hand you're concerned about sort of long term, big picture, what we're going to publish down the line, who we're going to work with, um, figuring out sort of these these bigger initiatives. And on the other hand, you're worried about, we'll have these pages of art and colors come in today. So it just, it started to make a lot more sense to have two different people managing those different aspects. So for me, yeah, it's really fun. Like that's the thing I like is figuring out what to, and who to publish and all of that. And you know, David now gets to work more directly with the editors and the creators and sort of see to the day to day, which is nice. So it's, yeah, I mean, I, I love it. I love being able to steer to whatever degree possible what we're going to be doing here. Okay. All right. Uh, so, before, uh, actually one real quick, just something I've been wondering. What's the bear's name? The bear's name? Yeah. What's the bear's name? I don't know name? if I'm prepared to reveal the bear's name yet. Okay. I like that okay. he's just masked bear right now. Okay. But, uh, All right. I mean, that's what he's called on the TF on the uh, IDW wiki right is now. Is it? Yeah. All right. I'll tell you. His name is Nakomi. Nakomi. <laughs> but, and there's, there's a... He's named after a thing from my childhood, but nothing in the ROM related, so oh, okay. I, I'm curious if anybody could figure out the origin of that. So, well, I certainly can't off the top of my head. <laughs> no, no, nor so. should you, but, uh, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, you got, I mean... And the bear's going to yeah. get more play soon, too, so... Uh, yeah, that's the thing, it's like, we've got Livia and Orphion, and Orphion right, uh, right now, or Orphion. Orphion, yeah. Or Orphion. Orphion's an Italian yeah. word that means giant snake, or snake god. So it that seems fitting. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, so now, and, and I really liked in the annual getting to sort of see Rom's, uh, you know, like like getting to see that see that backstory. Um, oh, and yeah, like I got to yeah. tell Rom's new origin. Like yeah. it just it it's still as a fan of this stuff. Like yeah. it's amazing to me every day that I'm getting to do this and working on these things and bringing the character back and telling his origin. Which, and now I'm going to be working with Sal Buscema on some ROM stuff, you know, the guy that originally created the character for Marvel. Like, it's it's all it's all been kind of an amazing thing. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, shoot, I had a question and it just left my brain. Um, gosh, what was I getting Giant asked? masked bears, no, face no, nuts. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, and I think one of the things that definitely makes Rom stand out, uh, at, you know, amongst all the amongst all the Hasbro heroes, is uh, his speech pattern. Now that's something lifted. Uh, that's pretty much like like when I first read it, it's like, 
it's like this is lifted almost directly from the way he would speak in the uh, in the original series. Yeah, we're not we're like, trying not to do too much of that, but it's so yeah. hard not to channel that. But, that and uh, Silver Surfer. Yeah. There's sometimes there's a line where I'm like, oh man, that's way too Silver Surfer. We gotta humanize that a little bit. But I mean, I feel like that's one of the things that's really that makes him stand out and gives him a you know and and you know especially for people who are not like super fans of like the Silver Surfer or anything. Yeah. It's like it's like to me that was just always keeping that 80s like that 80s tastic. Uh, you know, like, you know, you, sort of your, pit, you know, your pitiful weapons cannot harm me, dire rage. Yeah. You know, it's like, and I, mean, I have flown near the star. As know, we were talking about, like, his cadence and how, how he should speak and everything and his speech patterns. Um, and giving was, him that distinctive, uh, uh, that distinctive uh, speech bubble, I think. Yeah. Also, uh, but it, it was more of like, okay, yes, this is how we're familiar. Like, this is how we hear his voice in our heads from the old comics. But it also made sense to me that he's been essentially stuck in his armor and fighting a war for 200 years so he's he's two centuries removed from his humanity and so Not for him a couple light years yeah and so he's seen families and worlds and friends die you know during this war so for him he, it's made him a little bit more inhuman just as a way to mentally survive the whole thing like he really should be just out of his mind insane at this point you know um which is a thing that we we barely hinted at but but sort of plan to touch upon more but so some of this piece pattern is based on that it's just the idea of this guy that by necessity has become almost less and less human so he can be a more efficient warrior or soldier yeah, yeah and, and I think you know that's definitely one of the things that's that, that was key about the original series and what made Rom a great character was the the sort of how you know what the struggle that of his uh, feels like he's losing his humanity and, yeah you know, across the series and he is um in issue 10 which is a, a standalone thing that it, it picks up on some of the um, plot elements in the second storyline but it is um it's a tense and kind of horrific issue but it's also a a bit of a releasing of steam so it's like orpheon has been this stuffed shirt blowhardy military leader guy and so we, we sort of deflate them a little bit and, and let them be reminded a little bit of their previous humanity. So you see that like this is to some degree a facade, you know, that inside like he's still the 18 or the equivalent of an 18 year old kid who's been trapped in this armor and fighting this war forever. So there is still that side to him that he's just suppressed over time, but it does find a way to come out here and there. And so issue 10 is a fun way to sort of play off that overly stiff personality that they have. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, last question, because we're, we're approaching the 20 minute mark at this point. Um, what can you tease about the future of Rom and, uh, and yeah, yeah, like what can you tease about the future of Rom and his adventure and the other Space Knights? Um, I will tease that they, they separate soon um, and go off in different missions that are building toward an even bigger storyline. A lot of the things that we've introduced, because there's been these sort of disparate um, storylines that have been introduced that all actually build toward a, a big thing. There's, so there's okay. a big resolution coming um, and a big battle and a couple of big new threats and villains that we've never heard of before. We're gonna see more of who this uh, strange wraith-like character called The Absence is and what he's all about. Um, and a lot of the stuff that happens in issues five to nine, we find out are just the piece of a much bigger thing that we're building for. So big stuff blows up very soon. All right. Well, thanks so much for talking. Yeah, man. It great was, talking. To you. Uh, it was great. Uh, I'm, like I said, loving Rom, and can't can't wait to see what comes next. Excellent. Appreciate uh, it. So now, I need to have him sign my multiple copies of Rom number one. So one per customer. Okay. Thank you.